Hey, what's going on everybody? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use our new bokeh maps in Grayscale Gorilla Plus, specifically with Redshift. So why did we create a set of bokeh maps? Well, bokeh maps are going to be really important because if you're using just like a default bokeh shape, like a circle in 3D, it's going to look extremely CG. It's not going to look realistic. Real lenses have imperfections, they have a little vignetting, they might have some chromatic aberrations. So we developed a whole bunch of bokeh texture maps that you can use in Redshift and Octane to help your renders look more realistic. So in this video, I'm gonna break down how to get those up and running in Redshift. Let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. We've got Redshift set as our renderer. We've got a pretty cool scene set up, a very cinematic scene of our Christmas lights going off in the distance. And we got a pretty long lens on the camera. I think we're at like, uh, what are we at? A 200 millimeter lens. And our focal point is pretty much at the beginning of these strands so that everything's going to kind of fall out of focus. And uh, let's go ahead and fire up the Redshift IPR and see what we got. So I have this camera already set up with everything with the bokeh maps, depth of field, uh, HDRI link, which we'll talk about in a second. And it looks really cinematic, considering that if we don't have this bokeh map set up and we don't have all of our depth of field, this is what you see. It's really not very good looking. So let's flip back to our finished camera, and we're going to talk about how to get our bokeh maps working to get a scene that looks as cool as this. First thing, let's jump back into our generic camera. And the first thing we want to do is go under tags and grab a redshift camera tag, which is now not red, which is kind of confusing, but oh well. All right, so with that camera tag selected, we're going to go to the bokeh tab down below here, and we're going to turn on override and enable. And right now, our bokeh and our depth of field is, is actually deriving it from our, our camera. So our focal distance and circle of confusion radius is set to derive from our camera. So we jump back into our main camera settings and under the physical tab, we're able to adjust our f-stop to get either a larger or smaller uh, bokeh. So if we make this like one, our bokeh is going to be like crazy big, which will never clean up properly in Redshift. So that's just not a good idea to do anything that large. Um, and inversely, if we bring it up to maybe like 11, we have a much smaller kind of shape. This is already looking better, but our bokeh is very boring. It's just basically a circle. And you can do some things in these camera settings in the bokeh to change the blades and make it an octagon or whatever. But it's still not, it still doesn't look real. It doesn't look interesting to me. It doesn't look very filmic. So that's where these bokeh maps come in. And you can see down here in the, in the uh, bokeh tab in my Redshift camera tag, we have an image input here. We can turn on use bokeh image and we can actually choose an image, which is where all, the, all of our bokeh maps are going to come in handy, right over here. But first, let's set up some HDRI links so that we can pop around and try different bokeh maps. Okay, so with the camera selected, go under tags, HDRI link. HDRI link can drive a lot more than just uh, HDRIs. Uh, and if you've seen any of our other products, you kind of already know how that works. So let's grab our Redshift camera tag and under Bokeh image, let's just drag the word image up onto our HDRI link tag and let go. And now we have our Bokeh map hooked up and we can see it's even changed here in the viewport. Let's make our, our f-stop a little smaller so that we can see this a little bit better. Let's do like 4.5. Now we can see that shape a lot better. So jumping back into the, uh, the camera tag here, I wanted to talk about the normalization modes. Normalization mode is kind of a confusing um, topic, so I highly recommend checking out the Redshift documentation. Uh, we'll throw a link to it below. But basically, according to their site, it basically means that, uh, let's see here, Redshift allows you to select an image normalization mode. This means that we can adjust the texture automatically so that it balances out the white pixels. Sometimes you might want to ensure that the colors you'll use will add up to white. In that case, use white color sum. In other cases, you might want to tint the overall image to not be white, so, but you still want the final image not to be any darker than it normally would be. So basically, this one on the left here, the normalization mode is set to none. This middle one here, the normalization is set to unit intensity, and the far one is set to white color sum. Basically, all the pixels will add up to white, removing any unwanted tinting in the in-focus pixels. I tend to use unit intensity or none, depending on the look I'm after. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's change this to unit intensity. And I'm just going to, you can see how the, all the bokeh just got a lot brighter when I did that. And if I change it to white color sum, it's going to look almost the same. And this type of scene, you're not really going to notice a huge difference between unit intensity and white color sum. So let's leave it on unit intensity. 
And I'm going to flip it back over to um, bucket mode and let this clean up so we can really see what this looks like. Okay, so that's all finished up. And keep in mind that it's going to take a lot of samples to clean some of this bouquet up, especially the ones that are like really out of focus here. These little points of light in the back. So just keep in mind that, you know, if you want to clean it up, you're going to have to reduce your threshold if using a unified sampling. The one on the right here is not using any bouquet maps at all. It's just a generic white default in the Redshift camera tag. And the one on the left here is using one of our default uh, bouquet maps. And you can see it just feels way more photographic, it feels more, way more realistic because lenses have imperfections. They have sort of like, you know, you never, it might be, you know, an imperfection in the lens. It might be a different iris shape. You never sort of, you know, you know, like you want to like not have a generic white like circle. This just does feel so CG to me. Having these options in, in here is just going to be great for you. All right, let's go ahead and close this down and talk about all the different shapes that we have available. So let's jump back into a progressive mode. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we got here. We've got all kinds of categories. We got basic, which is going to be kind of like your basic shapes of bouquet, uh, including lots of chromatic aberrations. So with our camera tag selected, we can just kind of hop through all these different ones here. And I'm just going to isolate a shape. Let's just isolate this shape down here so we can see that clean up a little bit better. Here is a, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that's working. Oop, I think I turned it off. That's why. There we go. Now we're, now we're, now we're cooking. So we got some, some with like more chromatic aberrations happening and kind of steps through that chromatic aberration down to like a clean bouquet shape. So we've got a heptagon here. Let's try an octagon. Maybe we want a pentagon. That's kind of an interesting vibe. And then flipping over to Fresnel, we've got like the same shapes, but with a little bit of Fresnel on them to make them feel a little bit more filmic. Uh, let's try, that's looking pretty good. Let's see what this one looks like. All right, it's not bad. But my favorite, I think, are the simulated. These tend to look a little bit more realistic. They have some of those like little dust bits and imperfections in the glass to give, you, give it that like more natural vibe. Let's find like maybe simulated, oh, or simulated 12 and of course if you want to see some of that detail you're going to have to let that clean up for a while let's try simulated 16 i like this one a lot because it has kind of like this crescent shape which is really interesting that's looking good actually let's let this one cook and see how this one looks in uh bucket mode here Great. All right. This is looking really good. It's way better than like your default circle. I think the only thing it's missing for me is maybe just a little bit of an anamorphic look. So I'm going to turn off the bucket mode and go into uh, progressive mode. And I'm just going to right. I'm just holding down shift and dragging a little region in this area here. And with our camera tag selected, I'm just going to change the aspect to like a 0.8, which is going to give us this kind of anamorphic lens look, which I really like. And then I'm going to change my, uh, my bokeh map to, let's do something like extremely, a lot of chromatic aberration on this one and see how this looks. So let's let this one clean up. Yeah, this one's giving me like camcorder vibes or something. It's, it's a pretty interesting look. Um, and what's great because it's, uh, all our bokeh maps work with our HDR link tag here. We can literally just, you know, kind of regionize a little area here and we can just step down and try different levels of that chromatic aberration until we find something like maybe we don't want it at all. Maybe we want to change back to a normalization mode of none to get more of a, a dimmer kind of look. And that's looking pretty good. Let's see maybe what something like that looks like. Ooh, I'm kind of digging that one. All right, so let's let this one clean up, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. All right, yeah, that's looking really good. I'm digging this. Um, yeah, this looks so much better than the generic kind of, like, bokeh that, you know, you get just by applying the camera tag and whatnot. In fact, let's go ahead and, like, put this to the PV, and then we'll go ahead and disable our tweaks here, get that back to where we started, and let's get out of bucket mode. So yeah, this is just a far more photographic look than your generic circle bokeh. Okay, I'm, I'm using that term interchangeably. <laughs> so 
So you might hear me in this video say bokeh or boca just because I say it both ways and that's okay. If you say it one way or the other, hey, I've got you covered both ways. All right, so that about wraps up our bokeh maps using uh, hdrylink and in our plus library. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.